We've created arrays as an output. Now how do I go in and manipulate these elements in the array? Well, to do that, I can use them as an input. So, watch this. I'm going to get rid of the number going in the count terminal, the random number generator, clean up these, delete this, and be tricky, take this over here, right click on it, and change it to a control. Now I can wire from here into the for loop. Before I do, take a look. I can't run this yet because in the for loop, n, or the count terminal, is not wired and there are no indexing inputs. Okay, well, let's make an indexing input. There's my auto index tunnel coming inside and a solid run arrow so I can run it. How many times do you think it'll run? Let's find out. I'll create an indicator off of the iteration terminal and run it four. Did it run four times? Well, no, not really. It's zero indexed. So if I run it, I can see zero, one, two, three, four. So counting that zero, this ran five times, which is the number of elements in the array. So when I auto index an input from an array, the loop runs once for each element of the array. Can I disable indexing as before? You know it. I will click on disable indexing. I get a solid tunnel. What am I taking in each time? Well, if I create an indicator here, I can see that each time I'm running this, I'm taking in a different value out of this array, one by one, bringing each value in. So that could be helpful if I want to do something like multiply each element in my array by a certain value. Maybe I multiply it by three. Take that and wire it to the border, create an indicator here, turn off, highlight execution, run it. And there's the same array with each element multiplied by three. Incidentally, those of you in the lab you know will know that I could also just use the polymorphism of the multiply function to wire this array and scalar directly into here and have the array output. But don't spoil the surprise. But if you're not sure what polymorphism is, then take a look at it in the lab you help. It's pretty important. Remember, polymorphism. You'll see it on the cloud exam if you take it, and you'll also see it in the Six Clear Lab View Fundamentals course. It's really good. Now let's get rid of all this stuff, except that label, shift click on it, delete the rest. Now can I right click on this terminal as before and disable indexing? Sure I can. I can't run my VI anymore because LabVIEW doesn't know how often to run this loop, so I'd have to tell it maybe five times. But then what comes in each iteration? Well, it's the entire array. Why would I want the entire array each time? Good question. A typical use case is to compare multiple elements in the same array together. So let's say I want to compare the zeroth element to the first element or the first element to the second element, and so on. This is an easy way to do that. Of course, there are other ways to program that, but we're talking about auto-indexing and arrays here. Stay focused. So far, I've kept it simple and done a 1D array, but how do I create or manipulate a 2D array, or more, or a higher dimension array? That's pretty easy too.